What's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a lovely day today. Today I got a video that I think a lot of you are going to find pretty useful. We're going to be looking at how to create a film emulation using just Resolve stock effects. Now, this is a pretty important thing to know because it really helps you understand some of the fundamentals of how a film emulation works so that when you do upgrade to a fancy plugin that, that creates a lovely emulation for you right off the bat, you understand how it's working, what's going on in the background, what's the business, what's good, you know, what's going on under the hood, so to speak. Today, I'm gonna be walking you through how I go about creating a film emulation without any plugins, fancy effects, paid LUTs, anything like that. Today, we're just doing raw dog resolve, baby. So in front of us, we have some red footage. This was shot in the desert, really awesome footage. And I think that this will allow us to create a look that will carry over pretty nicely between shots. First thing we're gonna do is set up the basis of our film emulation here in Resolve. The way that we're gonna do that is with the Kodak film LUTs that come within Resolve when you download it. And they are pretty awesome. They're engineered really well to provide that perfect filmic contrast curve that you would expect to see if you were shooting on the real deal film. Boom, get our CST, and we are going to change a couple things. Uh, our red wide gamut, log 3G10 into DaVinci wide gamut, and then we got our node tree. I'm using like my own remix of Darren Mostyn's tree that he posted a video about on his channel. Really, really great uh, structure to sort of build off of and modify. What do we need to do here? So we need to get our CST, and we need to change this to Cineon film log. Just leave everything else the same, output, color, space, rec 709, all our good settings here. Boom, another node. So, we're going to go into our ba -ba 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 film looks. These are the film looks here that are going to come loaded with Resolve when you download it. Uh, you don't need to do anything. And yeah, they are all rec 709 or DCI-P3, Kodak 2383, and what other ones do they have here? Yeah, 2383 and uh, 3513. Let's have a little look. Let's audition some, see what they're doing. So that's kind of cool. Don't mind that. Ooh, that's a strong maybe. I'm gonna pop that on and then we're gonna make another one. Just, oh snap, that's kind of that's kind of saucy too. Uh, I like that a lot. And then are there any others? Ooh, this might be the one. Not gonna lie, this might be the one. Yeah, this is the one. I like this one. This one looks great. So what did I end up using? The D60 Kodak 2383 Rec 709. So we can delete these because we're not using them. Just pop that there. And we'll call it Film What? Boom. Okay. So now we have completed our Rec 709 transform. Basically converting your footage to Rec 709 with like film with like a film look. Rec 709 but like stylized, remixed without doing a whole bunch of grading. Now we're gonna actually start grading underneath um, to just get everything in a good place before we start to do the last tweaks and touches and start adding effects to really bring the whole look together. First things first, yeah, we definitely wanna brighten this up a bit. It's a sunny day, so it doesn't really matter if our sky gets a little bit hot. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. A little contrast, why not? Yeah, that looks nice. Feeling like we could maybe, this would cool things down a little bit. Ooh. And warming them up. Actually, let, let's warm them up to go with the deserty vibe. Why not? Uh, yeah, I like where that kind of sits. And then, oh, no plugins. Yeah, we'll give it a little bit of saturation. And then, okay, I'm already seeing an issue. So right here, this is feeling a little too like yellowy green, kind of oversaturated. So a little hue versus hue. A little sat versus sat, and then, yeah, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, I'll take that, I don't mind that. A little more warmth than that, why not? And then, okay, see that we're still getting that kind of goopy saturation going on there, so we definitely want to figure that out nice and early in our process here. Maybe a little more of the good old savvy sat. Okay, we'll leave it like that for now, maybe we'll key it later, we'll see what we end up doing. So now we're going to go into our curves here and we are going to do a little bit of a split tone. This is something that you will often see in film where, where there's a bit of like a warm yellow orange uh, flavor to the, the highlights. <coughs> <coughs> and then conversely on the shadows, there's more of like a cooler blue tone going on. So to do that, we're gonna go into our curves and if you click on these little lettered icons here, you can work on the contrast curve of each of your three channels, which is pretty nice. Firstly, warmth in the highlights. So we're just gonna bring this up a little bit and then I'm also gonna take some red out of our shadows, like so. Blue, we're gonna pump some of that 
into the shadows like so and just pull it out of the highlights a little bit. We're gonna go to green and I usually bring it up a little bit less than the red channel and then drop it probably around the same. I'll usually drop them both equally to make sure that both red and green are being pulled out an equal amount so that one isn't leading to uh, a bit of a cast in the shadows. Don't want that. But that's a pretty nice little split tone going on. I like that. Maybe we'll even take our uh, high end and go a little warmer. It's feeling a little on the pinky magenta side as well. So I'm just gonna, yeah, let's really crank some green in there. See, this is starting to do some nice things. I like this. I'm not sure we're 100% in film world yet, but we're, uh, we're doing some good stuff. Turn off these four nodes. That's what we've done, you know, since we've started our, our grade. Not bad, I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. Maybe I'll go to our balance and just adjust it a little bit more. Cool. In terms of windows and everything, I usually don't do that until later on once I've sort of settled on a look. I think we're getting pretty close. Let's see how this carries over to uh, another shot. Oh! Okay, we don't want that. Bring it, let's bring everything down. Bring it down, bring it down. And just take our offset and maybe cool things down a little bit. Okay, that's landing in a pretty good world. I like, I like where that's headed. And then let's see how it applies here. Yeah, that's pretty acceptable for starters. Maybe a little warmer, a little less magenta, and then we'll just go and darken things down. Cool. As you can see, that sort of base look does copy over pretty well to the other shots in our sequence. Um, that being said, obviously you're gonna have to adjust the levels of every shot a little bit. It's not like you can just apply grade, apply grade, apply grade. Now we're going to move on to our actual uh, sort of filmic effects, so to speak. So first things first, we're gonna grab some grain. So first things first, we're gonna grab some grain. So boom, I'm just gonna pop it on my film box node and let's see what we're getting. Oh, that's pretty soft. Let's really, let's crank it. <laughs> let's go crazy, why not? Grain size. Yeah, you can see how the uh, stock resolve grain works. It's basically just scaling up or down on a, like an, an overlaid scan. That feels pretty nice. I, I, don't, I don't hate that. Uh, okay, let's roll with that. And then next thing, we're gonna wanna do some halation. So this is probably my least favorite. As you can see, it's not doing very good stuff right now. But yeah, this is probably my least favorite aspect of creating a film emulation within Resolve. Okay, so the next step will be adding our halation. Now this is probably the part of a film emulation that Resolve does the poorest job of with its native effect. I don't love this effect. I think that it definitely overdoes it quite a lot. And when you throw it on, it can be pretty, pretty gnarly, like from a starting point. So let's see what it does. Yeah, no, that's, this is trash. But fortunately, when you start to finesse the, the sliders that it gives you in here, you can uh, kind of refine it. And in most cases, you'll be able to make it look pretty, pretty good. Yeah, that's nice. And then take our spread down a little bit. Mm, yeah, I, I like that. That looks pretty good. And then, yeah, we'll hit it with some secondary glow. This is a really awesome set of sliders here. It does a secondary layer of glow effects that are a slightly different hue, a little more on the yellowy side. Refine it a little bit. That's feeling pretty good to me. I like this. So now you can see why I really don't like Resolve's halation. Like, what the hell is going on here? This is, no, we, this, this isn't gonna do it. That's really annoying. It does do that. Maybe we can, oh Jesus. There we go. While it is annoying that it does kind of pick up in the wrong areas sometimes, you often are able to sort of just finesse the effect and Sometimes that might be to the detriment of the effect as a whole, but it's better to have a little bit of halation versus too much and halation where there shouldn't be because that's definitely going to throw off your viewer. Last thing we'll do, a little bit of contrast pop. This is an awesome effect that I like to use pretty frequently. As you can see, it does some uh, pretty wavy stuff in terms of texturing. It's definitely very strong right off the bat, but we're not going to leave it quite this sicko mode. So I'm gonna drop my blend kinda to, yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm honestly pretty happy with this as a whole. Not bad at all. So, okay, now that we've done that, we could do some more local masks. That's always a fun thing to do. Boom, boom, it can be super rough. We're gonna feather it anyways, so this is fine. Let's bring it up, boom. 
a little contrast. Now, maybe that makes it feel a little too crazy with the bounce, but I kind of like what this is doing, sort of. Feels a little weird here. Right on the bridge of her nose. Ah, there's a problem. It's that sneaky halation doing too much. Excellent. Okay, and we lost in the corner. See what I mean? If you, if you massage it enough, you'll get to where you need to be. The last thing we're gonna probably wanna do is to add a little bit of bloom, a little bit of a glow to it, because you'll notice that film often does have like a little bit of a, a little bit of like a dreamy sort of glow to it, especially around the highlights. So we're gonna go and recreate that using the glow effect. Drag that onto my node here. We're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave the composite mode set to add. We're not setting it to soft light for this technique. And let's just bring our threshold back. Yeah, just something like that. Just something super subtle. And then a last thing would be maybe we'll even go into our, our sharpening and we'll just soften our image by just a smidge overall. I like to use this blur tool because uh, film is always pretty soft. It doesn't have that sharpness that digital cameras have. It looks really nice to sort of take that sharp edge off. So that's why I like to do that. There we go. That's pretty sweet. I'm honestly not mad at that at all. So let's carry these uh, little adjustments we made over to the rest of our footage and see how that feels. Okay, here we go. We got the same effects all pasted onto this tree and I think I just want to do a couple more adjustments just to, you know, get that split tone doing a little more talking, something like that. But that feels pretty good. I like this, I like this. Oh, also another good tool to use when you're making a film look. This hue versus luminance tool really allows you to add nice density to your colors. Another characteristic of film is that colors will be very deep and, and dark and you know juicy and succulent. Hue versus luminance is the way to get there. So yeah, taking a look at this clip, I think here I also want a bit more of a split tone. I'm gonna do a little bit of that kind of action. Maybe work on our primaries a little more. I think I'm actually gonna go a little harder on the uh, contrast pop here. And then maybe take our blend down just a little bit so it doesn't feel quite as worked on. And there you have it. So this is one way of making a film emulation in Resolve only using just the stock effects. The effects do work pretty well. The only benefit that you're really going to find from purchasing a plugin like the aforementioned Filmbox or Dehancer, Look Designer, any of them really, is that they save you a lot of time. This definitely took a little bit of figuring out to sort of create a a look that does feel like film. It takes a lot more massaging versus the plugins. These plugins are optimized for making film emulations, so as a result, you know, you just need to drag and drop and boom, you're gonna be in a pretty good uh, world overall. But that being said, you can do a lot here within Resolve and you can create a pretty solid film look overall. I don't think I would use this technique in professional work a whole lot because I do have access to plugins which I find usually give me a better result. But if you're not looking to spend all the money and want to grade your videos up nicely with a film emulation of sorts, this is a great way of doing it. And there's also a lot of ways you can mix and match the techniques we used in today's video to create a node tree and film look of your own just using the stock resolve effects. I wanted to keep today's video nice and straight to the point, quick and easy, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next video very soon. Woo!